Okay, by now you should understand the basic building blocks of clay minerals, that they are comprised of the basic building blocks of a tetrahedron and an octahedron, specifically a silica tetrahedron and aluminum octahedron. And the tetrahedrons form tetrahedral sheets, the octahedrons form octahedral sheets, and then these sheets stack in defined layers that create one-to-one -one type clays or two-to-one type clays, with one-to-one -one type clays being one sheet of tetrahedrons linked or associated with one sheet of octahedrons. And this pattern repeats for one-to-one -one type clays. Whereas two-to-one type clays, there are two sheets of tetrahedrons or tetrahedral sheets associated with one octahedral sheet, and that pattern stacks on top of one another. So initially, those clay minerals have no charge. The charge on the entire clay mineral is satisfied by the difference between positive and negative charges within the clay. And as soils and clays specifically weather, elements are leached out and inside the clays, those elements that are initially present are removed and replaced by another element. And so we're going to talk about this with respect to how soils and clays specifically become negatively charged. This is the premise behind the negative charge on clay particles. And this is called isomorphic substitution. Isomorphic substitution, what is it? The term isomorphic means iso is same and morph or morphic is shape. So same shape or same size. And this is what happens during the weathering scheme, natural weathering scheme. In the tetrahedron, the initial element in the center of the tetrahedron is a silicon atom, Si plus four. And don't be bothered with, this, with the fact that in this diagram here, plus four and minus eight, that doesn't actually equal zero charge, but it does when oxygens are shared in the sheet and when they're shared with the octahedral sheet. So this is what happens during natural weathering. Silicon is weathered out and it's replaced by another cation of similar size or same size, similar. And in the case of the tetrahedron, aluminum replaces silicon. Okay. In the octahedron, magnesium or iron can replace aluminum. And so these elements that are replacing what is in the center of either the tetrahedron or the octahedron, the element itself is of similar shape or size. And why is this important? It's important for a number of reasons. One reason is if the element that is replacing the original element is too small, the structure collapses in on itself. If the element that is replacing the original element is too big, the structure explodes. This is not what happens though. You replace an element such as silicon with a, an element of similar size, and in this case, it's aluminum plus three. When aluminum plus three moves in here, it replaces a plus four cation and you lose a positive charge. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you based on this diagram. But another way of saying this is that you gain a negative charge. And this is the premise behind isomorphic substitution leading to an overall negative charge on clay particles. And so stated here, what does this result in? This substitution results in the creation of a negative charge, and that negative charge is distributed across the clay surface. It's not really localized. That's because of these atoms that are being shared amongst the sheets, right? So let me show you another example that emphasizes what we just described. So isomorphic substitution 
results in a permanent negative charge. And we'll talk about this again, right? It's permanent because of the natural weathering scheme and the replacement of the initial cation within either the tetrahedron or the octahedron with another cation that has not been weathered out of the system yet. So this is what occurs in the tetrahedron or the tetrahedral sheets. The initial atom in the center is silicon plus four, and it oftentimes is replaced with aluminum plus three. So you lose a positive charge in the process or you gain a negative charge in this sheet. In the octahedral sheet, the initial element is aluminum. And what can substitute for aluminum in here? It needs to be an element of similar size and shape. And that just so happens to be magnesium plus two or iron plus two. And that can move in and kick aluminum out and replace aluminum with magnesium plus two or iron plus two. In this case, we are starting with a plus three charge. The initial charge on the or in the octahedral or on the octahedral is zero because of sharing of oxygen atoms. The overall charge is zero. But if we replace it with a plus two charge, we lose a positive charge. Or another way of thinking of this is we gain a negative charge. And so when this occurs, when natural weathering occurs and there's substitution of one ion or cation for another within the matrix of the clay particle itself, negative charge arises. So isomorphic substitution results in three things. It results in a permanent charge. This charge is permanent. And it's permanent because the natural weathering scheme does not go backwards, meaning in the tetrahedral or tetrahedron, silicon won't kick out aluminum after silicon has been replaced because silicon is actually weathered out of our soils eventually, and aluminum is left behind. It's a permanent charge. Isomorphic substitution occurs predominantly in two to one type minerals or clays. And there's very little substitution in one-to-one -one type minerals or clay minerals. And why is this? It's simply because two-to-one type clay minerals have more locations for isomorphic substitution to occur, right? Because it's a, it's a three-layer sandwich. There's a tetrahedral sheet, a tetrahedral sheet, and an octahedral sheet sandwiched in between. There's plenty of places for isomorphic substitution to occur as compared to one-to-one -to -one type clays which have one tetrahedral sheet to one octahedral sheet. There's more to this than what I'm explaining here now, but that's the basics. And then the third point with respect to isomorphic substitution is that this permanent charge is not at all affected by pH of the soil. The pH could be 10 and you'll have a negative charge on the clays. The pH could be zero and you'll have a negative charge on the clays. Okay, it's not affected by pH.